Here is another one you may have not considered, and this really depends on the amount of uh, salt and sodium that you allow into your diet. But this Himalayan crystal salt, this is pink salt here you see in the photo, is really chock full of um, iodine. It's 500 micrograms in just one gram of salt. So it, it's almost, you know, we're talking about 0.5 grams of iodine for one gram of salt. So it's half iodine. Uh, I encourage you, if you've not ordered this, you can just simply Google Himalayan crystal salt, or you can probably pick it up at your local uh, health food store and replace your normal salt with it. You know, most of our salt is um, strip mined. Uh, if you've ever been out to west of Salt Lake City where Morton Salt's got their big thing out there and they're stripping it off the surface of the Great Salt Lakes, so you can see where your salt comes from, um, one of the areas. But it does they have to re-add iodine to it because they've stripped it out in the process of, of getting it ready for you. And this would this has it naturally in it. Um, and if you've never had um, raw salt like this, so to speak, um, you know, start little um, because it's it's very potent. It, it has a strong flavor. And you can buy, like a pepper grinder, you can also buy a salt grinder to put it in so that you get smaller granules for your cooking or diet or whatever. But you do want to make sure that it falls within your normal sodium intake. Some uh, people watching this may have to control their sodium either for blood pressure reasons or heart reasons or whatever. Um, so you may want to take that into consideration. Um, dairy products also have iodine in them. Uh, and um, not a whole lot. You know, we're talking about a cup of milk. Um, we'll have about 55 micrograms. And one thing I do want to encourage you is that, you know, uh, dairy products are a total grab bag. Uh, my family switched completely to raw milk um, from a local provider. You might live in a state or a country where that's not possible. There's a lot of places it's illegal. Here in the United States, you can't cross state lines with it. It's uh, pretty heavily regulated. And sometimes you have to be kind of underground to get your hands on it. Um, but when you pasteurize anything, you kill the bacteria, which is why we do it. However, milk has a lot of good bacteria that we want in it. And so when you pasteurize milk, you kill the good and the bad, and you essentially get a sterile product. Um, and you're not doing yourself a whole lot of good. There's no real point in drinking it after it's been pasteurized, at least for health reasons. It might make you feel better about yourself, but you're not really doing a whole lot for your body. So if you are, um, you do want to get iodine through dairy, I would look for a uh, raw organic cow or goat's milk. You might like the flavor of goat's milk better if you don't like cow's milk. And cheese, it's going to be really, really rich, uh, a lot better tasting. You will be shocked at what it actually tastes like compared to what you get in the store. And you will get iodine in it. And... Um, I would encourage you, for those people who are lactose intolerant, and I know there's a huge portion of the population that's lactose intolerant, I have several friends that are, If people who are lactose intolerant can drink raw milk. And you might throw a huge fit for me saying that, but find any um, organic foods expert and ask them about it, or any milk provider and ask them. The reason you can't drink regular milk is because in the pasteurization and homogenization process, you kill the enzymes in there that help you break down milk and your body as an adult when you're a child you have all these enzymes for drinking your mother's uh, breast milk but when you get older you stop producing those enzymes you need the enzymes that are found in the milk so when you drink raw milk all the enzymes are in there to help you digest and you don't have any of those problems i know because i used to be lactose intolerant um, and when you drink raw milk you just don't have those problems because then all the enzymes that come with the milk are there to help you digest it and all those problems go away so if you don't believe me, try it one time, have a cup of raw milk, and you'll see that I'm right. Um, you won't have any problems with it, and you will be uh, very happy. It's, uh, <laughs> it's really good tasting. Uh, potatoes are another one. If you like potatoes, uh, of course, they should be eaten in moderation. Um, you know, if if you have a choice, you should be eating uh, animals and plants. Um, but potatoes are a great way to uh, get iodine. They have about 60 micrograms for about a medium baked potato. They're good to throw into your diet. Some people kind of go overboard and eat, never eat potatoes or they eat way too much of them. Uh, like anything else, should be done in some moderation. Uh, but they do have iodine. And you can grow them right in your backyard. Super easy. And the last way is to do an iodine supplement. Now keep in mind, like with any supplement, this is very concentrated. This here is Lugol's 5%. It's so concentrated that the federal government actually regulates 
5% iodine can only be sold in one ounce quantities. Literally, if you want to buy two of these bottles, you have to place two separate orders. You cannot put two in your cart. Um, so Lugol's, uh, J. Crow's Lugol's uh, 5% is a great source of iodine. And it has a very high iodine content. I've got a chart I'll show you here in a second. And um, so anyhow, we recommend that you pick up a bottle of this or the 2%, which is just a diluted version of this. So let's look at kind of the, the amount of iodine in each one. All right here, so we've got a chart here going back through the, the nine that we've just covered. Um, obviously, you can see the sea vegetables were up at the 2,000 micrograms. And then all the way down the iodine supplement is 6,250 for just one drop. So much, much higher concentration versus organic strawberries being 12 micrograms for a cup. And so it really depends on how much you want to eat, what's, the, what's your diet, how much you want to, you know, how much you want to take in. Uh, the daily amount recommended by the Food Nutrition Board and the Institute of, of Medicine um, says that your intake should be 150 to 1,100 micrograms a day. Um, they say that the average American gets two to 300. However, uh, people's <laughs> health, you know, that would be akin to me of saying Americans are generally healthy. I would disagree because we spend five times more on our health care than we do our, our national defense system. Um, and so I'm not sure what your uh, daily intake is, but it needs to be somewhere in that range. You can see that a drop of iodine solution diluted in water, you know, if you if you diluted it in a, a quart of water and drank that quart of water over several days, you could easily get your um, recommended daily amount. And if you want to go back and look, you know, the sea vegetables have 2,000 in a, tea, in a tablespoon micrograms here. That's uh, 1,000 times smaller than a milligram, so it's 2 milligrams. The Himalayan crystal salt, 1 gram of it has 500 micrograms or 0.5 milligrams. And the iodine supplement, here's considerably more. So one drop of it is over three times what you would get in a tablespoon of sea vegetables because it's concentrated. And that would be in the Lugol's 5%. So are humans deficient? Um, and this is kind of where I actually am this is my research started here. I'm putting it in at the end, but um, UNICEF published an article called Sustainable Elimination of Iodine Deficiency. And um, this was several years back. And basically they set out to, to eliminate iodine deficiency disorders worldwide. And what's interesting is, according to the World Health Organization in 2007, so a few years ago, nearly 2 billion individuals had insufficient iodine intake. Now, there's only 6 billion people on the planet coming up on seven, so we're talking a third, one in three people have are insufficient with their iodine. Uh, a third of those being of school age, iodine deficiency can have serious consequences causing abnormal neuronal development, mental retardation, um, congenital abnormalities, spontaneous abortion and miscarriage, congenital hypothyroidism and infertility. Um, those are not things to be reckoned with, and those are huge problems. I mean, those are major medical conditions. We're not talking about headaches and itchy skin here. Um, you know, spontaneous miscarriage is not a pleasant situation. Um, later in life, you can have intellectual impairments, um, which will obviously affect your employment and what you're doing as an adult. And this is their statement. Thus, iodine deficiency is the single greatest preventable cause of mental retardation, and it's an important public health problem. I would say so. And so, um, I want to, you know, this is something you got to take seriously. It's one of those things that doesn't get talked about a lot. And it seems if, you know, if you follow health stuff, you see that stuff that's really profitable for big pharma is what gets a lot of coverage in the news. Iodine is not the most profitable thing in the world. Um, and so, therefore, it doesn't get talked about. Um, but it is something that controls so much of our other health and so much of what's going on. And if you've ever had a friend or you yourself have suffered from thyroid problems, you know that, that it can just be completely debilitating and life-changing. So this is something you want to know what's going on. Not that you need to be scared, you just need to be cognizant of, are, do you have iodine in your diet? Chances are if you live in the middle of a country and you're not near the ocean where you're either eating the fish from the ocean or eating plants from the ocean, you're probably deficient on your iodine. So what should you do? Well, the easiest step is to pick up a bottle of iodine supplement. I mean instead of trying to find strawberries when they're in season and save them. You could pick up a bottle of iodine supplement and it'll last you a long time. Um, you could pick up some of the Himalayan crystal salt um, and use it instead of your normal salt. And um, you could do a self-test. And the self-test is pretty easy here. You basically uh, 
dip a cotton ball of the tincture of iodine, which basically tincture of iodine is essentially a part iodine, part rubbing alcohol so that it evaporates off. And you could pick that up at the drug food store uh, or at the pharmacy or pick up a bottle of Lugals from Voice of Eden or at your local health food store. And you rub it on your skin, paint a two-inch ball, uh, you know, circle it around on your skin like on your forearm um, uh, or in your upper arm like right above your elbow. And then you wait. And, you know, it's very, it's yellow. And you'll recognize if you've ever had surgery, they probably rubbed you down with iodine um, to sterilize the, the area. And if the yellow stain disappears in less than an hour, it means your body's lacking crucial iodine. Your body recognizes that iodine on your skin and soaks it up. If the stain remains for more than four hours, your iodine levels are fine. So it's a really affordable way. Instead of going and having blood work done and sitting in the doctor's office and all that nonsense, you could just rub some on your skin, you know, up under your short sleeve, and, you know, a few hours later, take a look at it and see um, how you're doing. So um, we recommend you pick up a bottle of iodine. It's about the simplest way to take to ensure that you're getting the proper amount of iodine. You don't want to go overboard like anything. Too much of a good thing can be a bad thing, but it's something you want to control in your diet. So I appreciate your time. Again, I'm Clint Brown from Voice of Eden. If you have a moment, we'd appreciate you to come over and look at uh, Voice of Eden and get on our mailing list. And I hope you guys have a great rest of the day.